Hi, everybody. Hello. I don't know if that one's on yet. I think it's going. That one is. Yay. Live, live, live. I think our Facebook. There we go. Okay. It's coming. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. How are y'all? Late, cold. It is chilly now. It's chilly. That's why I have a chilly. sweatshirt on. Me too. I have. Look at my sweatshirt. Hold on. So, oh. Oh, yeah, don't spill that, please. This is um, it's wonderfully made coffee. This yeah, is Christian our makes our best coffee. I don't know if y'all can see You can see it in this one. You guys can't see it. Yeah. I'll stand but up. But it's a, this is our oh, innovations God. nonprofit yes. sweatshirt. I have one too. This is our maternal health awareness yes. sweatshirts. So they're super please. cute, super yes. soft, and super they comfy. Are. So if you want to get one of these to support, um black maternal health and we have some that have the babies on them for black maternal and infant mine has both health. mine has the baby and the mom yes my mm -hmm. the more um the more feminine cut one hat that i have has the mom and baby on it but they are on the website um under fundraising and you guys can order them and uh yeah we'll get you one and ship it yes. out to you yeah i'm not wearing one i'm wearing Repping my sister's restaurant. Yeah. Wing stop in Tulsa. You got to rep that family. Yeah. Family, family. Family business. Yes. Yes. So tonight. So if you're going to eat junk food, eat at Wing Stop. <laughs> yes. So yeah, we're always talking about health, but if you do want some Go junk eat food, Wing Stop. It's actually really good. Wing chicken Stop. Wings. Yeah. It's good chicken wings and french fries. The french fries are good. The seasoning they that they put on the french it's fries. It's really good, actually. It's really yummy. Yes. And their ranch is good, too, even though. You shouldn't be eating dairy and all the things. So. <laughs> but if you do, that's where you should go. We are all a work in hey. progress. That's all I have to say you about that. You can't be 100% great, 100%, no, mm -hmm. I'm 100% healthy, 100% of the time. It's, it's, you got to have a little fun uh, sometimes. Yes. You know? But you can make the majority of good decisions. You can. Yes. You can. So Dr. Crystal is going to talk to us tonight. I'm excited. <laughs> Cause we, well, to learn about upper cervical chiropractic and kind of how it differs from traditional chiropractic and some of the other things that she does. So yeah. she's going to be doing the majority of talking and I'll probably ask some um, questions. And if y'all have questions, I know it's late. Some of y'all are up though. Um, you can always type them in the comments and we will get around yes. to them. Yes, we will. Yay. Okay. So the type of chiropractic care I do, I, there's a little bit of evolution of how I got here, but generally um, upper cervical deals with um, adjusting or making contact with the cervical vertebrae and it's the upper cervical. So there's typically seven, there are typically seven cervical vertebrae in the spine. Okay. Uh, there's also other types of vertebrae. So the neck vertebrae are typically called cervical, then Thoracic is going to be like the mid spine, and then mm -hmm. lumbar spine is the lower spine. Then you get to the sacrum and coccyx. But that's going to be a little bit of an anatomy lesson. But the cervical is going to be the neck area for the most part, all the way to the base of the skull, okay. down to um, right, right at the base of the neck. So I started off doing a technique called NUCCA, spelled N U C C A, which stands for the National Upper Cervical Chiropractic Association. But it's an, so it's an abbreviation that we use when. Um, and, but as I've practiced, I've practiced chiropractic for almost 17 years. Wow. That's a long time. It's, you're yeah. so cool. <laughs> Since I was three. And, <laughs> <laughs> not really. So, so then, um, and I started out this, I, I like this technique for multiple reasons. There's not because I think the, um, any other techniques, there are multiple chiropractic techniques. The one that most people are familiar with is, or, or, is something called diversified, but there's Gonstead. I mean, I can name, uh, Gonstead is another one that's a little bit more what we call a high velocity type technique. And those are typically, as a patient or a consumer, you're going to think of popping and cracking and twisting. They all are not like that. They're all a little different. And there's so many different techniques, activator, um, cox flexion, distraction. I mean, I can't, I can't even bring up, and there's, you know. So many. Mm -hmm. So whenever somebody says they see another chiropractor or they have seen or they do this, um, I, we don't always know exactly because everybody does has their own style to the techniques and the group of techniques they use. So for me, I start off with a technique called Nuka, but then I also incorporated, as the years went on, 
other upper cervical techniques and ideals. And so I just call what I do upper cervical because I've put my own style on it. Mm. But generally, I make the adjustment from the top of the spine, but I also adjust all through the neck, mm -hmm. right? Um, and I adjust sometimes I will take contacts around in, in the skull or cranium to, to do re tension release. It's really sometimes a little hard to explain. But then I do that to align the entire spine together. So one of the misconceptions that people have with what I do is that it only adjusts the neck. Oh, you you adjust, adjust upper cervical or you do a spinal correction upper cervical. Uh, then you I have low back issues or I have this issue. Or I have that issue. You're not going to be able to help it. And that's not true at all. It's, it's a full spine adjustment from the, Hi, up, the upper spine. Hi, Daryl. <laughs> I don't know Daryl, but I know you know Daryl. Yeah. So... Um, and, and so that, so that's one of the misconceptions. Okay. The other thing that sets me apart a little bit differently sometimes is that I don't do any popping, cracking or twisting. Right. The adjustment is very gentle. And that's not to say that anybody who uses any of the other techniques are not gentle. They ob absolutely can be. Um, a lot of the babies that Montika sees, um, already have a chiropractor. Mm -hmm. So, and when they adjust babies, that I would say, whenever I talk to, I call them more traditional chiropractors. Yes. Um, the amount of pressure, the way it's been described to me, is like you know checking the firmness of of a tomato. They're not pushing and Correct. cracking on on little infants. So I know Correct. a lot of people get really concerned about taking their, their infant, but if you have um, a chiropractor that is working with you, usually they're not using that much for force. Yes, agreed. With an infant. Yes, with an infant. And that's going to be across the board. I can't speak for every single chiropractor, of course, right. but I'll be very, very surprised if that wasn't the case. And I know the chiropractors that we... Um, all have contact with take very good care of these babies. Oh yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, so that this is not to say that what I do is better. It's just different, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Um, and I will say I prefer your technique because the popping and cracking um, actually will cause me some anxiety mm -hmm. sometimes. And I know that I've met people that will say the same thing. Yes. And so then when you can't relax, that's not beneficial either, yes. right? When you're getting an adjustment. So for me, um, it, that's just my preference. And it really, everybody is different. And I feel like there is somebody and for a everybody. practitioner out there for everybody. Just yes. because you try one thing um, doesn't mean that you should, just like with the food, right? I mean, I've eaten things for the first time like, oh, that was nasty. And then I tasted it a different way prepared differently and I thought it was you know good so yes. um and it's in different seasons too mm -hmm. different things yeah. um and so I think one of the things as a just a practitioner in general one of my goals is also to when I'm assessing people not just chiropractically but the whole picture is mm -hmm. I want to make sure that I'm giving the best care but if there is another practitioner that can um can add something to it. I have no problem with referring and saying, can you take care of this? We have a network of other practitioners and providers we do this with. Yes. Um, but I always like to, um, I always like to take care of people. So I, I want to mm -hmm. make sure that if I want to give them a chance and, and upper cervical chiropractic care has been so beneficial in so many different ways. That was, I have been adjusted multiple different ways. And when I was adjusted for the first time, um, with an upper cervical adjustment, it was just completely different. Mm -hmm. So, and, and I have that experience, you know, um, even with my oldest, I remember all of the things that, uh, she had to go through, um, and she's got oral restrictions and all the things that I didn't know about back then and had so many bouts with respiratory issues and so on and so forth. And we had actually gotten to a point, I remember where, um, her provider, um, pulmonologist, was wanting to um, do a CT scan with contrast, and she has had had horrible allergies. That's um, scary. Yeah, and and contrast dye has uh, shellfish in it, you know, and it can cause reactions. And it people. can right, and so if you've got, I think it's shellfish. Is it shellfish or iodine? 
it's got something in it. Iodine. It's iodine. So, um, I didn't want to take that risk with her. Um, and they also were talking about, you know, depending upon what they found, um, that they would be putting her, like, giving her a vest that would, like, shake her up all the time. Um, and then also for, um, they want to put her on low-dose antibiotics. And I was like, okay, hold the phone. And we had done all of the things medically that we were supposed to do. And I remember I called you and asked you, you know, could you help us? And I would say it didn't take many adjustments Mm -hmm. for her. And um, Dr. Crystal was like, you know, wherever she was at, I can't even remember. But she said it definitely could be affecting her respiratory um, function. And Mm -hmm. so we had those adjustments and... Mm -hmm ended up not I would say since then um she's been doing so much better um and it it was really life-changing for for us and a and a godsend at that moment for for her to not have to go down that other route so um I've seen babies benefit from chiropractic um my own family benefit from it and it's just you know it, it can be um very safe very gentle I will say, you know, there's good chiropractors just like there's bad ones. And there's good nurses just like there's not so good and that's nurses. Not and technique. same with doctors. It's just yes. like with everybody mm-hmm. else. And that's not I mean? always technique specific. That's right. just generally how someone is going to their attitude and skill level with bringing right. taking some. So taking always research your, your providers yes. and try and find out some information before you just, you know. But, but I, I'm sorry, I digress because... I don't know. I think that's a great story talking mm-hmm. about Agape and the, some of the things that she had to deal with and how much how much that helped her um, with some, her breathing. And some it does. And so I'm going to talk about some of those. I want to answer a couple of the questions. I think Daryl asked that he says he has a C5, C6 fusion with sciatica and some chronic low back pain. So all of those things um, are absolutely are things that I can take care of, that mm-hmm. this type of chiropractic can take care of. That I feel completely comfortable. I bet with. you could also help Dura with some rhythmic movement because mm-hmm. of the type of job that he has. Mm-hmm. He sits a lot. Oh yes, absolutely. Yeah, he um so I think that, that would be sort of movement. Yes. Did I not did, say you that? Said rhythmic. Oh uh, <laughs> a little different. <laughs> yeah, it is different. We were so, talking about that earlier. Yes. I was talking about rhythmic. I love rhythmic movement with my babies. But no, restorative movement that Dr. Mm-hmm. Crystal does absolutely. would be a great thing. Absolutely. Um to help you get up and do some different things. Um at the stops and everything that yes. you make. And then yes. Molly asked her She says, any benefit with alignments? And I'm guessing more specifically with alignments, I'm, I don't know exactly what you mean, but if you mean spinal alignment, yes. So that this is upper cervical chiropractic adjustments are as a spinal correction or a spinal alignment. So mm-hmm. it, that's just a different word that we use. Correction, alignment, adjustment, all of those things are what I use. So yes, it can help with that. So some of the actual health benefits. So of course, if I say this, is people are like, okay, chiropractor or whatever, this. But what what kind of things does a an average person deal with that this can help with? And it's there's you know, um, you know, multiple multiple things. So uh, one of the things, and we have to be careful what we say. We don't cure anything. We don't. What I think of saying. So here's how I think of spinal alignments in general, mm-hmm. is that the spine, what runs through the center of that spine is the uh, spinal cord. And mm-hmm. then what comes out of there are the spinal nerves. And so all of these nerves go out to different organs and muscles and different um, other tissue in your body. And it controls everything that your body does. And right. so the the brain is that master system. And then the, the nerves are all that connecting way. I'm just trying to simplify it some. Mm-hmm. So anytime there's an issue with how that... Um, how you're moving, how that is inputted in and out, impingements, um, what we call, we can call, you know, subluxations is a word that a lot of us don't use sometimes as much, but um, those are things that um, we can use. Um, I'm sorry, I'm getting, this is what happens whenever I need some coffee too, but we can use, we can use um, those spines whenever they have interference then that is going to, um, those tissues that they're going to are not going to function optimally. So if this tissues to the respiratory area, we can also talk about some of the things that come out of the brain stem and the irritation, the agitation, the impingement of that. If it's twisted turn, that can cause strain, tension on that area. Mm-hmm. Then you won't be, then that can cause issues of breathing issues. Um, it can cause pain. 
it can cause, um, I mean, so many different things. I just lost my train of thought. But a lot of things people think about is pain. Mm-hmm. But they don't think about respiratory. They don't think about sleeping well. They don't think about moving well. Mm-hmm. Those are other things that this can help with. So the other thing that's really interesting that we don't think about. So anything that fe- affects the nervous system, parasympathetic, sympathetic nervous system, uh, it can be helped by chiropractic care. And so upper cervical, in my opinion, for me, is is a great way to do that. Mm-hmm. Um so when you're talking about that, then even things like, you know, stress. Yes. Um, High blood pressure. There's actually studies um, that have been put out that the upper cervical adjustment, specifically this was a NUCA adjustment that mm-hmm. was done, can decrease blood pressure. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, and then, so blood pressure. So really, it's just a total body system kind of thing that you could do to to help. And I, I feel like that is... Um, true with most chiropractic yes it's just practiced you know the techniques are different, different. is that yes is that yes. so if someone was to come and make an appointment um let's say like Duro's watching what what could they expect when they were to come and see you so i want them to so the first thing is of course i'm going to take a full history mm-hmm. from birth um on to present I'm looking at physical traumas. I'm looking at um, all the, all the things that even that you wouldn't think ha- would have to do with your chiropractic. What about care. like medications and stuff? Absolutely, like that? I would look at medications, supplements, uh, surgeries, hospitalizations. I would look at you know, and then just I would also do a perception on stress assessment. But mm. I would look at your perception of you know function. What do you want to do? What you can you not do? Um, and then trace that back all the way. And then I also ask about other types of chiropractic care, medical care that you've had for that particular issue as well as other things. Right. And so it gives me this really great big picture of mm-hmm. the best that I can help you. Yeah, I know yeah. you look at like sleep and movement and yes. those types of things yes. as well. Um, and as bowels digestive. and gut health and things like that. All the functions of the body, lung function. I mean, it's amazing the things that I people come in for that they don't think it's connected. Mm. And so you're looking at, so I, I'm there to connect all of the dots and to yeah. say, you know, and what can I, what I can do now, what I can, and I can tell you in general too, once we kind of get through there and as we work through it, how much of what I can do if we need some other things or, um, or, or is this, I, I've had people come in, they get one adjustment and it's like they never were hurt. And then I have some people, we have to work through some things. It's it, it, the gamut. Babies, Children are usually really simple. They don't have a lot of physical, emotional trauma, mm. and that's injuries, whatever. Whatever birth can be one of those things. So that's when I say, you know, babies. Why are you adjusting babies? But babies coming through the birth canal or through a C-section can have misalignment. Oh yeah, a hundred percent. And and depending upon, you know, if they came out fast, if they got stuck, if there was forceps, if there was vacuum extractions if all all of the things there can be so many and, things or how they were sitting in utero and you know? the health of the mom the stress of the mom mm-hmm. um it, it can go back and that's not to say you know so there's so many different things i had a colleague of mine a long time ago she was in a really bad car accident when she was pregnant and she didn't have any actual injury but the jarring that caused her to go into early labor. So that is going to be stress on the mom, the stress hormones that were that, the stress on the baby. And it was out of her control. It was something that, you know. So those things happen. So we have to think about those things as well. But So the main thing with alignments, it's just taking stress off the system. Wow. Yes. Okay. Interesting. Mm-hmm. So you would do that complete history. I know you also do a lot, again, with restorative movement. Mm-hmm. And you look at labs if needed and all of those types of things yes. as well. Um, yes. But if what about the actual adjustment process? Because okay. I know when I get, when I've gone um, to other chiros, like, you know, you get on this table. I remember I got on one, <laughs> on one of my, someone that I really like, but I was on the table and I had never been on like the table. It kind of like breaks away. Uh-huh. And so when she had like pushed down, I thought that I had broken the table. It's I was like, table. yeah, it was a drop table. That's what mm-hmm. it's called. 
So I was like, oh my God, I'm so heavy. I didn't broke this lady's stuff. <laughs> Jesus, I'm so sorry. And she was like, no, 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 that's, that's what it's supposed to do. So I know that you don't have a drop table. No. So can you talk a little so, bit about what? So with upper cervical, we like. have our specific things and I'll kind of also different, differentiate and we can kind of, we'll address, which you just need to tell Daryl when he vis- comes and visits you, he needs to make an appointment with <laughs> yes, you because he's got lots of stuff going on that we need to address. Um, so he probably could help use your help and my help. Yeah. All the same. Yes. Do all that. Yes. So, um, I, I, so I'll start with upper cervical sometimes has their own and within the upper cervical chiropractors, there are multiple techniques in upper cervical chiropractors. Not all, some of them are more high velocity. They do. So when you go to, um, a chiropractor and you want to ask, you can ask questions, ask them to, um, ask them to explain to you what they do if that's important to you. But for me, so what I do is, so the physical assessment, so depending on what's going on with you, but I will put my hands on you sometimes, I usually do, meaning I will feel your spine. If there's any joints or anything that I need to assess, I will touch them, move them to see if they move correctly. Mm -hmm. I will also do a measurement. So I like to see people laying on their back and if their legs are uneven or even how they're they're laying on the table, if they can even lay on their back on the table, I watch how they do that. I watch constantly, even if I'm not checking that. Then... um, and then I also measure them on a device called an anatometer. But what I'm looking at is how you're standing and what your alignment looks like. So mm-hmm. I'm I'm looking at if your hips are rotated, turned up, down. If your if your body is turned, if your shoulders are, you know, uneven. But it's not just extremities because you know you can be perfectly in a line, but you swing a baseball bat. 90% of the time with your right arm and never with your left arm, right? And mm. so you're going to have some muscle imbalance. So I look at all of that together and then I make um, I make an assessment on how to adjust you. And the, then after that, the adjustment is on, I have an old, old, what we call, it's a gross stick table. So that's another technique from a long time. It's a upper cervical technique. And so I have a vintage table, but I really love it. And so you lay on your side and you just are comfortable, and then I make the adjustment on the one side of your body. Sometimes it can be the other side, but on one side of your body, and um, and so it's very gentle. A lot of people will even ask me if I did anything after I adjusted them because they don't. They can feel my touch, but they don't really feel anything moving. Some people do. It's just so that's the gist of it. I remeasure and then I check, and we you know we kind of go from there. Sometimes I readjust depending if I need to, but yep. neat. Yes, Yes. that is super cool because I have been um, adjusted by you and Mm -hmm. it is very comfortable. Mm -hmm. I will say that I felt, you know, definite some movement, but um, that's really interesting. Mm -hmm. So what else can you tell us about upper cervical or do you have anything else? Does anybody out there have any any questions? questions? Before we go, I'm going to answer the (laughs) message. I'm going to answer it. But... (laughs) Besides my awesome god brother who is talking to me, um, does anyone else have any specific questions for Dr. Or Daryl, do you have any specific questions for her that aren't like super in depth? Um, Cause yeah, we're gonna have to like. So and it can help, and it you can. You need like, a visit. You need a whole history. And <laughs> That's what I'm saying. All he he stuff, keeps all, listing problems. He needs stuff. to. He needs a whole visit. <laughs> yes, and I will. Uh, answer that question about land in Oklahoma. Oklahoma is nice. It's nice. It's not bad. So, but yes, so that, so that's really the, the gist. It, it is more in depth and there's a lot of beside, behind the scenes in my brain assessment mm-hmm. going on. Um, and then it's also personalized and individualized, right? So, yeah. So we, we practice a very personalized medicine. We're very, we tailor things to, to that person. So what I do is the same. I do a, a very similar adjustment for everybody, mm-hmm. but um, I assess everything and then so here's another question sometimes that people have is one of the things and a lot of my a lot of my friends I don't want to start coming to see you because then I have to go to you all of the time right and so I said well that's not really the truth so for me unless you're in an acute have an acute issue so something that's you're in a lot of pain at the moment I like to push you out at a week I only see people once a week at the most and then I start pushing them out depending on you know, how active they are, the severity, other issue, how long they've had it, mm-hmm. what is really going on. 
And so the goal is corrective. It means I want to get you with all of the things I know how to do to where you don't have to rely on me all of the yes, time for care. Yes, yes, yes. Um, even though that would help my pockets, it's not really helpful. It's not no. really what I want to do. I want to be able to help people heal mm-hmm. all the way around. And I feel like our practice is that way. Yes. You know, anyway, I feel like when I'm working with, with clients or when we're working with clients, depending upon what's going on right now if i have something like she said that's acute so we are working towards preparing for surgery or recovering from a surgery you're gonna see me more during that time but my goal is to give you the tools that you need and also with dr crystal so that you don't have to come and see us so that you have a plan at home a movement plan um change in diet understand you know about herbs understand about supplements that your body needs understand how your body is functioning based on your lab results and different Mm -hmm. things like that so we can get you to a point where you don't need to come and see us all the time all the time unless something else you know of course comes up and different things happen um but it's not something that we're like you know and then and then for chiropractic care you know for me there is a maintenance like i don't like people to go more than sometimes three like if they're doing great three or four months to six months at the most i like i like to have a checkup to make sure everything is good um Mm. some people i've had people hold their alignments for very very long but it's not by accident it's how it's their lifestyle some other things but anything can happen right you can right Mm -hmm. and so so being able to from stress to catching a cold to falling down yes you know different different things like that trauma and taking that tension off of the body i have and i'm not saying bring all your kids that have fevers to me please don't because you're really sick but i have please don't come to the office if you have a fever i've adjusted stay home i've adjusted kids with fevers and their fever has not pretty immediately um reduced so it's really because you're taking that tension now we also have to say what's causing the fever so if it goes back up we need to address that but sometimes it's just that being able to input a little bit into the body so the body can start shifting to Mm -hmm. the direction of healing right Yep. I love it. Well, you guys, we are going to end today's call. We are a call. This isn't a call. See, we both need to go to bed. I'm telling you. <laughs> we are going to end tonight's talk, and we will see you guys next, next Friday, Friday with a new topic. It was great. Thank you, everybody, yes. for watching, and we will see y'all later. Bye. Have a good night. Give me that one. Oh, wait. Hold on. I don't, I don't see where to end that one. I can end it. Hi, Nicole. Let's see. I don't see where to end this one either. Hmm. Right there. I think this is it. Hello. There we go.